Good uh, morning, everyone. Um, today, we're going to talk about things that you can do as a virtual assistant, as a Filipino virtual assistant. I want to share with you five tips that will help you ensure that you make more money. Because what's more important, let's be honest, um, you want a job that's fulfilling, you want a job that's flexible, you want to be able to enjoy the perks of, of being a virtual assistant, um, but you need to make money to do that. If you can't make money, it's not going to do anybody any good, right? So what do you need to know as a Filipino virtual assistant to be able to ensure that you get more money, um, enough money to be comfortable, to be able to sustain, to provide all the reasons why you're working? And we're going to specifically talk about American clients. Like, so how can Filipino VAs ensure they make more money by working with American clients? And I'm going to talk about that because I'm an American. And I've spent the last 12 years um, basically involved in matching up Filipino talent with American businesses. Um, I used to own a call center. I've worked in outsourcing for the big BPOs. I've done a lot of training. I've personally trained over 10,000 Filipinos in business analytics. Um, if you can think of a big call center like, you know, Accenture or Converges, I've trained their analysts. I've trained people from B, uh, BDO and BPI, uh, from Jollibee, from PAL, Philippine Airlines, from Cebu Pacific, um, from all the big banks in the Philippines. And so I've done a lot of training and I've done a lot of work in the Philippines. So I understand um, all the pros and cons of why someone would want to work with Filipino virtual assistants. And I believe it in so much that I set up a company to do that. So I do have a company, Sonic VA, it's an agency. And what we do is uh, we help um, match American business owners with Filipino VAs. And I've mentioned I have a couple of them here today. Happy um, to always have the support of my amazing team. I wouldn't be here without them. Um, but basically what I know well is what are Americans are looking for. And I spend most of my time in the Philippines. I just got back last week, having been there for most of 2022. Um, and I'll be here in the U.S. for about a month or so looking for more clients because I found so many Filipino VAs to work with when I was there. I did so much training and going to events and networking. Um, the talent pool has never been deeper. And Americans need to know about that. American business owners need to know that the Philippines has everything they could possibly want when it comes to hiring virtual assistants. So that's really where I'm at, advocating on both sides uh, to be able to bring people together. So I mentioned we're going to talk about what you can do to ensure that you make more money in 2023. And I'm going to break it down into five tips, right? So tip number one, as a Filipino virtual assistant, is that you have to know the market. And that means something different to each one of you. As a Filipino virtual assistant, you're going to find that some of you are really good at doing a little bit of everything. You're a generalist. You can do social media. You can do lead generation. You can do graphics. You can do video editing. And some of you are going to find that you're better off being a specialist, that you just do one thing really well and you want to keep doing it. But whatever you, you're at right now, whether you're a newbie or a veteran, whether you're a specialist or a generalist, you need to figure out how do you understand the market. And where a lot of Filipino virtual assistants struggle with American clients is they don't quite understand the cultural differences. They don't appreciate that you're working for somebody who has a different mindset when it comes to business than a lot of people you may know in the Philippines. Now, some of you, probably most of you, have worked in outsourcing. You've either worked in the BPO, you've worked in a call center, or you've been a virtual assistant. You have an advantage when it comes to being a virtual assistant working with American clients, as you've done it already. Um, so I always get this question, you know, especially from newbie VAs. I, I want to be a VA, I don't know how to start, or a, a VA who's kind of struggling to you know find clients. Um, you got to turn your experiences into your strengths. And if you've done this before, then you play that up. I've got experience working with American clients. And Talk about that, share that, make sure that people understand that when you apply for jobs, when you have interviews, when you put together your resume, when you're doing marketing for yourself, you want to really promote that because people in the U.S., they look for people that can just jump right in. They're not going to spend much time training you. They're not going to onboard you. One of the biggest challenges new Filipino virtual assistants have when it comes to working with American clients in general is that um, they're expecting training. They're expecting guidance. They're expecting the client to tell them what to do. 
And that doesn't happen very often. And when it doesn't happen, the Filipino VA can get frustrated, can make mistakes, can be afraid. Um, and that leads to um, disconnect and miscommunication. Eventually, the relationship will will end because the client doesn't feel like the VA is trying very hard and the VA will feel like the client's not being very helpful. Um, that, unfortunately, is the norm. That happens in most matchings between Filipino freelancers and American clients who just find a VA off the internet, off LinkedIn or off online jobs, PH or whatever. One of the perks of working with an agency or having training and working with a group like uh, um, Tribe X or like Surge or uh, County Peoples, um, all these different you know Facebook groups out there that are for Filipino VAs. If you're working with some of them, you're going to be exposed to kind of a group idea of what to expect. But if you're a new and the client's new to hiring a virtual assistant, you're going to have challenges because you don't understand each other. And this is why you have to really think about knowing your market. If you want to work for Americans, if you want to do something that you are good at and do that for, for clients to make money, you have to be clear about it. You have to be upfront. I don't recommend many people approach a job interview or apply for a job saying, I can do anything to everyone. Um, people want to hire somebody, especially American small business owners. They want to hire somebody that they're not going to train, that they can just like say, go do this, and you go do it, and then they'll pay you for it. Um, so that's tip number one. You know, know your market. Now, if you want to work for a company, um, you want to work for an American business that's going to hire you as a full-time employee, or you're part of a team of, of, of virtual staff, or you have a leadership in front of you, a TL, a supervisor, um, that you're going to get some training. You're going to get some onboarding. But if you're going to work one-on-one -on -one for a small business owner, you can't expect it. You have to be ready to just figure it out yourself. You have to figure out how to like answer problems and to figure out how to like come up with solutions without a lot of guidance because that they just don't have time to do it. The reason they're hiring you um, is because they're too busy to do everything that their business needs them to do. They don't have time to do everything that needs to be done. So they hire a virtual assistant to do things like your social media, to edit videos, to do lead generation, to balance their books. And that's where they're expecting you to be able to come in day one and work. Now, you shouldn't always be able to just jump right in. I mean, you're going to need some onboarding. They're going to have to explain their business to you, have to give you access to their tools, talk about how to communicate. There are things that will happen, but it won't look like a traditional outsourcing job working for a call center. It won't look like working for a Filipino company. Like if you get hired by Jollibee, they're going to train you the way they train everybody else that works for Jollibee. There's an onboarding period. There's a training period. There's a probationary period. Those don't really exist when you're working for uh, small business owners, especially Americans. So that's the first tip, right? Tip right one is know your market. If the market you want to play in is American small business owners, you got to be ready to dive in day one because that's what they're going to expect. All right. So um, number two, um, you have to do the math, right? If you want to make more money, you not only have to know who you're working for and how to be successful with them. But you want to make sure that what you're doing is going to make the money that you need to make. So I want you to think about this. How much money do you need to make each month in pesos to keep doing this? So, you know, do you need to make 30,000 pesos a month as a uh, every month to meet your requirements for your, your payments, for your family, for your financial obligations, for the people you're supporting? What is that number? And then how many hours at what rate does it take to make that number? So if you're working for a client and they're paying you four bucks an hour and four dollars an hour is about the average for a Filipino virtual assistant who's working as a freelancer working for multiple clients. So if you're working for four bucks an hour and you work 40 hours a week and you're working four weeks a month, so that means you have to have clients consistently, no gaps. Uh, no clients that come and go, but just consistently working, you're going to make 32,000 pesos a month if the exchange rate's around 50 pesos to a dollar. So full-time, no gaps, $4 an hour, uh, gets you 32K. Is that what you need? Do you need more than that? Do you need? Do you want more than that? You probably do, right? Um, so if I can see most of you, you'd probably be shaking your head right now. Yeah, of course you want to make more than that. Um, so you have to figure out what you do 
that people will pay you more than four bucks an hour for. And you have to find the clients that will pay you more than four bucks an hour for. And you have to be selective in finding the clients that are going to be successful over a period of time. So you don't have to constantly spend time looking for new clients. The average Filipino virtual assistant works for under four bucks an hour and works about 20 hours a week and has two or three clients. Most of you, mathematically, will not hit that market number that you want, that 32K, that goal. So to hit that, you have to be better than almost everybody else. You have to work harder and you have to work smarter. But you need to know what your goal is. And if you're not going to make your goal, then you look for other people to help you, right? So if you have clients that are trying to lowball you and get you to work for $2 an hour, it's never going to make you successful. You're going to have to you know, replace that client with somebody who will make you more money. And they're out there. You just got to keep looking for them. Got to keep trying. You got to keep hustling when it comes to looking for your clients and do the math on what it is that you need to keep doing what you're doing. So if you want to, you know, think about what are some of the jobs where you should be making four, four bucks an hour, some of the skills that you can use um, that will make you more money. They tend to be things that are creative versus managing. Most Americans can't justify, right or wrong, can't justify paying somebody a lot of money to post in their social media, especially if it's not generating a return on investment. And the challenge with social media, as any expert will tell you, is that you have to be consistently creating engagement content. And you can't just create the content. You got to have the content be useful, be engaging. People have to have a call to action. People have to take action when they see social media. If that's not happening, then no matter how much you post, it's not going to do any good. I'll talk about this as a, another tip down the road today. But basically, you need to be able to figure out what you can do to help people grow their business. And social media management is the most common way to get a VA job, but it's also the hardest to make a lot of money at um, because most people aren't going to justify spending a lot of money for somebody to post on their Facebook and Instagram for them. Um, it's just the reality of, uh, I know the market. I, I've, I've talked to literally thousands of American small business owners in the last few years, and they just don't feel like that's a good expense. So if you're a social media manager, you have to narrow your niche. You have to be really good at one thing. Are you an IG expert, an FB expert? Do you do FB ads? Um, are you really good at creating reels? Um, can you manage someone's TikTok account? The specific ones are the ones that will people will pay you more because now they're paying you for something they can't do themselves or don't have time to do themselves. That will be more easy to see a return on investment. So if, if you want to be a social media manager and do anything for anyone, you're going to find work, but it's not going to be stable work and it's not going to be pay what you want to get most of the time. If you want to make more money and you want to be more consistent, specialize. And as you specialize, not just in social media, but I'll tell you the areas where you can make even more money. And that's really um, in video editing and graphic design. So right now, the biggest need for American business owners, especially ones that are middle-aged, is they have no freaking clue how to make a TikTok video. And even if they did, it's not going to work because they don't know what they're doing. Um, or if they do actually know what they're doing, they don't have the time to edit it, put it in the copy, to put the hashtags, to put it out there and to get engagement on it. I tell people that are, you know, Gen Zers, um, all the time, your best opportunity is to work for Gen Xers, right? So if you're 25 or younger, find clients who are like between 40 and 60. Um, they know they need TikTok. They know they need IG. They'll create content, but they can't manage it and they can't do it consistently. That's the best pairing. Now, if you're over 25, if you're a millennial or even a Gen a Gen Xer, um, you can do it for the same groups, but that's the best one to be in right now is if you're young and fresh and have this new perspective and you grew up on social media and you know TikTok, you can sell that to somebody who's twice your age because they're going to be like, they didn't grow up with social media. They don't understand TikTok. So everything that you do for them will be something they can't do themselves. So if you're doing social media for somebody, you want to make sure you kind of level up. And video editing is kind of like the crown jewel of, I think, VA work right now. If you can be a good video editor, you should be making six, seven, eight bucks an hour. You know, um, the more experience you have, the better videos you can make, the even more. And that's really where you start making, you know, 40, 50K a month when you're able to do video editing um, and graphic design. 
Um, it's just better than traditional social media jobs. Now, if you're a bookkeeper as a background, you focus on that. If you have a marketing background, you can focus on that. If you've done things like build websites, if you have the ability to make sales funnels, you know, there's ways to make more money. But again, those are specialized skill sets, right? And that's really the whole point. If you're a new VA and all you do is general VA work like social media posting, you're only going to make three to four bucks an hour to start. But within a year or so, you should build up enough skill and have enough experience in a certain niche that you can then start charging five, six, seven bucks an hour. And then after you do that for a couple of years, by year five or six as a VA, you should be charging $10 plus. You should be making $12, $15, $20 an hour. If you're not doing that, then there's something not right in your approach. But that's the second tip I'll give to you um, is figure out, you know, do the math, make sure that what you're doing makes sense.